Okay, so this is going to be the last uh, Wakanda. This is me, T, from the Patterson State to Transit Tibetan. And, and we had a, a session before when, when, when my Ole and my wife Gertrude, and, um, you know, the, somehow the thing got cut off near the end, you know, so I just want to uh, finish the thoughts that uh, I had. And uh, they're going to do whatever they do. And for a change, I actually wrote stuff down, which is, you know, unusual for me. Anyway, uh, so I have a, one of the tops, African tops, authentic. You can tell because of the patterns. Not, this, not these white patterns, there's some patterns that you probably can't see. And it's, uh, it's really like a winter one. Anyway, that uh, my brother, uh, Dr. James Conyers, gifted to me one time. Uh, baby, baby, darling. Can, can, yes, can, can you hand me my, my Mooty bag? I want to represent the Rastas, you know, if I can. Yes, you are. Yeah, come on. Say, say hello to the peoples. Come on. Can I say hello to Hi. The there she is. <laughs> <laughs> you heard her talk the last one. She don't want to talk no more. She don't like to talk. She don't even like to be on camera. Uh -uh. <laughs> my little Mooty bag from the, from the Rastas. Got to represent, you know, the whole diaspora. Okay, now I had ended up at uh, the midpoint I was making when the, when the tape cut off was that at, at, at the end, the, the thing about it, um, uh, if you, in the African-American presence, you know, I'm talking about the, 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 uh, the descendants of chattel slavery peoples, um, what happens is we, we, we've been battling for the, all the time we was in the States, you know, all the time, 400 whatever years we've been battling. We, and we're still, we're in a war, we're in a war. We recognize that. In a war, you do have allies, but the thing is, you, you, you won't win the war by people uh, are doing the war for you. So this whole thing about, you know, uh, the African nation of Wakanda, and, and I insist that Wakanda is the entire, entire continent, we, we, that's in another posting. You can look that up if you want. That nobody can give, you know, you can't give us, you, the, the aid that we want, if we need any, we, we, we will ask you. You don't, you don't just say, oh, they need this, this, and this. You know, that's like, no, 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 no. We're here, we're sitting here in South Africa. What happened in apartheid day? That, you know, what happens? They ask for help, and then we give them the help that they ask for. You see? So, so that last part where, um, where uh, T'Challa and, and his sister, uh, Suri, come and he says, oh, do this here and do this and do that for them. You know, that's cool. That's, that's, that's the thing. But no, no, you ask us first. So that's, that's a little thing that I, um, that I, that I picked up. That I, and I really, really wasn't, I didn't like that part. Okay. Um, at the same time, when he was there with Shuri, and what what, what does and what happened? I was uh, the only thing. Oh man, what not bothered me? Well, maybe it's a budget thing, and nobody really thought about it. But you know, you had the women. You know, warrior women, all well, well represented. And Shuri's, the, you know, the, the generation that that sort of know the modern world. They still try to hold on to tradition. You know, which was great about that character. She's a bridge. But that last scene, remember that last scene takes place in the daytime. Now, when we first, when the first film first started out, it takes place at night. You had the guys on the basketball, the kids on the basketball court, which makes perfect sense because that's what happens. We do be on the basketball all night long getting that perfect, perfect shot. But in the daytime, you would actually have girl children there. The typical thing for especially American kids would be like, you know, American black uh, girls would be double dutch. So if, you know, this is not a necessarily a criticism, but that, that last scene when that spaceship comes down, right? The, 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 they should have been uh, uh, the girls there, even with the, you know making the the, the the markings on the thing to do the little pop shot thing, or or more specifically, double touch would have been really good, been good. And then that spaceship interrupts there, so that when Shuri comes and he, she's going to explain, you know, about science or whatever have you, she's explaining to the boys and the girls. You see, so that's the only real, real, real big flaw I found. But that has nothing to do. That's my own, you know, in hindsight, not hindsight, about what I saw. But I don't think they were thinking like that because mainly the, the writers and everything, they're all men. They're still a male dumb. No, I won't get into that stuff. So let me go to some stuff that I. You want to uh, go on. And in fact, let's, let's go back to that. I didn't understand first when I, I, had, I saw the film again. I mean, to, to say that. With some, you know, um, since, since, since we recorded that first thing. And um, here's the interesting thing. I didn't realize that uh, um, uh, Killmonger's dad, you know, and, and Zuri, that, that was a young Zuri who was a spy. I, I, mean, I got it, but I didn't, you know. So, so it goes back to that scene where basically, uh, uh, Let's say uh, T'Chaka uh, saves Zuri's life when he's going to be killed by Killmonger's dad, you know, for betraying him, you know, because remember that for O.C. is a great scene, you know, they're doing, they're doing strategy, you know, and tactics. I like that. Black people not known for their strategy attack, but that's what the Panther Party was saying. Panther Party was doing strategy and tactics, which is really great. I really love that, that part. 
But so when so when Zuri stops Killmonger from from killing him, you know what I mean? Says take me. He's probably saying it was my fault that all this stuff happened. So don't take it out on him. And plus, you know, uh, of course, at that particular point, you know, T'Challa um, uh, knows about it. But every the whole nobody in the kingdom knew about it. it was only the secret between T'Chaka and Zuri. Those are the only people that knew about the child being left behind, all the rest of that stuff. So it makes it clear for me now. And what we're saying on that, it was interesting, a really profound thing. And really, again, I identify with Killmonger up until the strategy at the end, which is, I said before. I identify with Killmonger as far as characteristics go. But if I was to say I was characteristic, it would be, it would be Nakia is my character. Okay, because it's a spy, and that's what I think that African Americans who go to this for give them information. That's what we're supposed to be all around the world. We're supposed to be give back information, the, our best to address the thing. Now, Killmonger, because he was so, you know, uh, laser beamed with his thing, you know, he, he said, I killed in Afghanistan. I, you know, I killed in, you know, wherever he killed. And he said, I even killed on the, uh, on the continent. He said, he even killed Africans. So remember that part. He killed because he was trained by the military and trained by CIA. That's what, you know, okay. Anyway, so it was really profound when they, when 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 he go when he he uh, he, he defeat well, I say, well, he defeats uh, Chichaka, and he, and he gets buried. He visited his 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 father. Now remember, his father is not in the ancestral realm because he never became a panther. His father he visits his father in the Oakland situation, right? And the most profound thing was when the father said, "Well, no tears for me." And he says, "Hey, we get death all the time. Basically, hey, we get death for my tears. Ain't no big thing." Now, the reason why I identify so much with that is that from, when I was a little, I grew up in the Patterson Project, the Mont Haven section of the, of, of, of the Bronx in New York City, you know, South Bronx. And um, something happened when, when I, actually when I was in foster care, uh, we were terrible. I was like, well, me and my brother were terrible. We were getting in the spade. But um, uh, the, the, the woman had us, you know, tied in the basement back to back, like, you know, cowboys and Indians kind of thing like that. And, my, and I was crying. My brother, my old girl, who's like two and a half years older than me, he said, you know, don't worry, Anthony, I'll take care of you. You don't have to, don't stop crying. And I stopped crying. And from, from like, that, that was like when I was five years old. From that mo moment on, I, I, never, I never cried. I never actually cried. Don't tell me, yeah, I get a little, if I get a hand, you know, get, uh, bump with somebody made little to tears, but I'm talking about crying, right? But when I went to Africa the first time in the, in, in the 90s, when I went to a uh, synagogue, Hi, baby. Yes, come on, baby, I'm, I'm talking something very serious now. Um, when I went in the 90s, I visited. I was in synagogue. I visited. I was in Dhaka. I also went to the door of no return. And uh, in there, I went to this whole whole thing. I can't explain it. It's too too deep right now. But anyway, uh, they, they, when you're there, um, we, I was with an international group of radio people, and I was only two really, uh, uh, me and Sheldon were the only two people were, who were basically descended of chattel slavery. These people from all over the world, even black people from all over the world, okay? And um, the guy was telling about the door of no return. He was doing, had these, had these chains and whatever have you. And I literally, and I, and I had just changed into African uh, a tie that I had bought um, in, in Senegal there, uh, uh, in the car before we took the boat over to, to Glory Island. I can't explain it, there's a bunch of stuff happened before this happened. And I was dressed in that, and, uh, and, 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 and the guy that was interpreting, um, I, I'm listening to him, he's doing, he's shaking his chains, he's doing that, he's doing that, and I literally blacked out, standing up on my feet. The next thing I know, I woke up, and the guy was right there, he was up on this perch with little this or whatever, there's up these steps, and he came down and was right next to me, and he was giving me the chains to hold, and I pushed it away. And, and my sponsor, well, you know, uh, the, the, a, a young lady, I remember she has this moon face, and uh, anyway, these two sisters, they just pulled me out of there, and uh, walked me out of there. And it was like a profound experience, it was like amazing. So I, that's why I know I come from that area, because my ancestors try to grab me back, you know. The next month I had gone to Gambia and I saw my, my third eye, you know, again. So that area of Africa, West Africa, I don't mess with it because, you know, I just don't mess with that area right now, okay? So I say all that, say, because after that experience, I cried. I'm, I cried. Man, on it, I cried that night. I cried on the plane back from the car to New York. I cried. And since that moment, I, my, my, I can cry. You know what I mean? I go to movies and cry to movies, whatever have you. But it was so it was very, very strange. So when he says no tears for me, I really resonated with me. You know what I mean? Because it's that anger, whatever that is, not, that not knowing your, uh, in fact, at that moment, they both cried, you know, uh, in the movie, talking about uh, uh, Kill and, and his dad. So I, mean, I, I identify so strongly with that, which gives me, which brings me back to, to, to the picture of Black Panther. I think what happens in this picture or this experience, if you will, 
whatever it has informed you up to talking about black folks mainly, but even white folks, whatever informed you, you're going to bring that your knowledge to the film. So it's so, so the film has a, a bunch of levels on me that, that that people may not understand. For instance, go back when 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 when, um, when uh, uh, Zuri comes to the door, he looks out the people when they're putting all the guns away and whatever have you. He said, "Who is it? It's just some boy. I forgot what he said. Some Grace, some Grace Jones looking women, right?" Now, if you know, if you know back, this is really, uh, it's a point that nobody has, now I haven't heard anybody say it, but Grace Jones back in the day, right, she was the first one to have that, the, she was the first one to wear, like, different hair colors, which, which actually is a hair, it's is, is, is African to, to, to adorn yourself like that. She's and she's very dark skin, whatever. She would bore head, she would just outreach, nobody, she, she is like the great, the, the, the grand master of what this whole called Afro-punk uh, a movement is about this Afro Afro fu uh, uh, a fusion thing that they're talking about. That's out of the whole lot of the Grace Jones, the Fishbone, you know, the uh, Spy Twenty Four. You know, those those kind of groups that I I, I know about. Right? So so what I'm trying to say is that was a reference to Grace Jones, which like it's profound. You know, this is all oh, interesting. It's it's like the African American filmmakers got all of the African American and and what we romanticize about Africa all all together. Okay, so that was you know, that was very uh, prof profound for me. I should tick some of these things off, so I won't I won't uh, repeat them. Uh, let me try to go down there. Oh, uh, also, I say I'm from I'm uh, like I said I'm, I know I'm from West Africa, and all down to you know whole, the whole thing. I've had a relationship with uh, with the Yoruba community. Now I'm I'm actually in religious religiously wise, I'm what's a, I'm, I'm called a, I'm a deist, which means that I've st I've been to a lot of different religious exposed a lot of different religious tr tracks and, and situations and it all comes to me that I have a direct connection to, to, to God if you will. I don't go through any, you know, I don't have to go through Jesus or Muhammad or, you know, Krishna or whoever, you know, to understand or to commune with, 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 with God. Okay, so I'm a deist, what's called a deist. I study a lot of stuff, I studied a lot of stuff and that's what I've come up with. Uh, but one of the things in in the Yoruba uh, uh, culture, the Yoruba religion, I'm a child of Ogun, you know, which is that's the that's the smart. I told you before, that's, that's the black, the green, and a little bit of red. That's why I like this cap. But Ogun is known as the warrior with the iron and the, with the grass coming. He's the one that discovered iron, and people think of him as the warrior. What they don't understand, Ogun is also the healer. Because remember, some of the the, the uh, blades made of surgical steel, whatever have you. That is Ogun. So Ogun is not just uh, a, a warrior, but it's also a healer, in, in, in this my interpretation. So in that uh, in that sense, you know, Killmonger is just pure warrior, but Nakia is warrior and healer. That's my that's what I say. Okay, so let's keep on going. Uh, this is there's a joke, just a joke that I found when I when I got here about Africa. How how can you how can you like say in South Africa? How can you um, uh, know that there's an African American around? Because what happens? They might come in say through uh, uh, Nigeria or or where or or Kenya or or you know or maybe even Angola, whatever have you, and they they pick up some 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 dress from from that area, right? And then they move on to, then they might go to, I don't know, say, say Zambia, you know, they may pick up a Zambia fabric. Then they might come to South Africa and pick up some South Africa. So what happens is you see them, they have jeans and then they have these attire from different African nations. By the time they get to finish their journey in South Africa, you, they just don't, they just mix and match, you know. So it's, it's sort of, so it's interesting that the film would actually have that in there, okay? All right, let me keep it going. Oh, let, uh, I'm, I'm going to scroll how I've written here so I won't miss anything. I love the end, the, the credits, you know, especially the end credits, you know, with the, the whole, just the whole thing with the story of the sand and stuff like that, the, the granules, right? It's, a, you know, the, the most famous uh, title person is, uh, is a guy named Saul Bass, so he's died a while ago. But, you know, he, he did all the Alfred Hitchcock ones, and he, he, he made one film in his life, a great film called Phase Four about these ants. It's an amazing film called Phase Four with the numeral, numeral four, if you ever get... P H A S E, the Roman numeral four, you know, one and the V, right? If you ever get to see that film, it's the only film he ever made, but he's known for his titles. But whoever did these titles, and I didn't, I wait for the DVD or the, you know, I might have to buy me, uh, uh, what do you call it, a laser disc or something like that, because I, I got to see this. I got to have this in the, in the collection. Anyway, uh, uh, the, the, the titles. And, and, and I have this thing about when, when a movie ends, I like to see what the character looked like in the movie when you give the characters, you know, name. And so this title, it was magnificent. I really just like the end credits in the, in the title, like that. 
Oh, uh, Killmonger. Okay. It's interesting. He, now, one of his lines is he, because everybody's in the arms, man, Killmonger, we're going to go Killmonger. But I'm not so sure, right? He says he studied, you know, he studied the remaining enemies. And, but, it, but, but, he, but people missed the line. Missed the line. He said he studied them to replace them. Which is what happened here in South Africa, or in, 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 in Zimbabwe, all these countries that, that were occupied, you know, and people stayed for generations. They actually, when, 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 they, when people got liberated, especially in South Africa, the first, first, first thing they do is they create a middle class, you know, and then what happens is these political leaders, they actually have to replace the colonizers. It's the same thing. You know, and so Killmonger was just doing that. He was going to, you know, do all this sort of whatever he was going to do. Okay, um, and, and to talk about when I say replace colonialism, colonialism has many faces. The hard colonialism, you know, is like basically the military and and, and the economy, right? There's a soft colonialism. It's like sports and and, and entertainment, maybe like theater and, and for film and music. That's a soft. And when you emulate, when you, you take the thing of the mass, you, so when they have you playing, the, uh, well, you understand what I mean by that. In the middle, somewhere between the hard and, and the soft, that's where I put religion. And that's how we're controlled. We're controlled by the hard, but more importantly, these days, the hard is not, you know, we're controlled more by the soft, okay? I'm talking about soft colonialism, okay? Or, or, or you know, uh, beating up on the downtrodden. Uh, so there's a, there's a problem. I did you know, uh, last name with girls. Oh, Grace Jones. I got to sneeze. Why do I have to sneeze? I don't know. Um, oh, this nigga. Comes to two. might happen again. I want to say little, something a little bit about, about the Claw character. He, it, it, when, when he, just before he got killed, just before Killmonger kills him, it, it, when they're leaving, he says, he, oh, he's going to South Africa. Well, he's, he's supposed to, I guess he's supposed to be somebody from South Africa. The boys. This is the second one. No, I didn't go yet. Well, no, 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 no. And the thing about it was really interesting to me. Again, I'm informed by my my experience, my experiences. He was basically a cartoon character. You know, he's doing all this stuff, and a lot, of, a lot of uh, 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 cultural appropriation of make it rain. That's a black thing. You know what I mean? Oh, you got a mix. Uh, and, 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 I got a mixtape. Whatever. You know, whatever. Not he did a mistake. Uh, um, the CIA guy says uh, Everett. So he says, Oh, you got to have a mixtape. I don't want to. No matter. I want to hear your music. Like that, but when I first came to South Africa, I purposely flew into jo jo uh, Johannesburg. Uh, I was um, I was come here because I was invited to Cape Town to Bush Radio. So I took a bus across the country, and on that bus I met this guy. I'm talking, you know, this white guy. I want to say it that way. And he had this book. He's read this guy Tom Sharp. You know, he's a satirist writer. He I think he died a couple of years back in like 2012, 13, something like that. But that was my first experience in South Africa reading, and, and he wrote these these sharp satirical things about South, South Africa. I forgot what, I think it was, I think the thing was Indecent Exposure. Well, he, he has this wit series. The guy is really, he's an English writer. Anyway, and he shows, he got banned from South Africa because he showed the, the police or whatever as buffoons, as basically like a cruel claw kind of thing. So I brought that to the film too. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so that's that's just the end thing that I wanted to say that I missed from uh, from from the thing. But I would like to say uh, say this. And uh, 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 there's oh there's one more thing. It, it, they have all the African you know whatever. But I noticed there was some graffiti in there too somewhere on the walls. But maybe I'll have to look at when I get when I get the DVD or whatever I'm gonna get. Then I have to really study this film. Uh, and it's going to make a lot of money, like it's going to make this film. This, the, the DVD sale is going to make a lot of money. You know why? Because Africa does not, Africa, I'm talking about the continent, have a whole lot of first run film, uh, 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 what do you call it, theaters. There's a place like Zambia, you know what I mean? Uh, well, I, I, I guess in the capital they have some, some theaters. Uh, you know, in Malawi, where I want to go, there's not, you know, it's not a whole lot of theaters. So a lot of this, a lot of people are going to get down, they're going to have pirating stuff. But when the DVD comes out, that's going to really, People who didn't have, didn't have access to theaters, they're going to get all this stuff, you know? But also, one of the most important things now, I got to see it. <laughs> Excuse me. Dusty. Maybe I'm allergic to this thing. One of the things is um, Black Panther, this is going to be a cultural reference, you know? That's what's going to be really important. It's going to be a cultural reference because a lot of people experience it in groups and together. So, um, that's all I have to say about about Black Panther. I had to, you know, uh, this is a, um, the continuation of that thing that got cut off and all. So that's just want you to know that. Uh, uh, Gertrude, darling, you yes, there? Yes, dear. Come on, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna.
want to do your, you want to say goodbye, but do our little what, what kind of goodbye, baby? Okay, you ready? Wakanda. Wakanda forever.